Okay, I am so excited to talk to these two right now, Sam mm. Ramsdell and OJ. The infamous. <laughs> oh, oh, Hi, my dog guys. We love dogs. We're very dog friendly. So, yeah. Yes, oh, there is. Ring, there's ring. always animals running Hi, Peach. somewhere <laughs> in the videos, so I apologize. So I just got to start by introducing you guys. Um, for people that may not be aware, I mean, you are all over the place. TikTok and Instagram are pretty much your two main platforms, right? Yeah. And then you have a Facebook as well. But, yeah. um, and I've got my doggies playing now with squeaky toys. So yeah, it's going to be a dog friendly. <laughs> I love it. Dog friendly uh, interview. But um, I first discovered you on TikTok and I first discovered you, I think with one of your videos of shoving food in your mouth, yes. because you do hold a world record for the largest mouth. Can you tell I me do. a little I bit about that? Two. I technically have two Guinness world records. Um, I have the world's largest mouth for a female, mm -hmm. and then I also have the world's widest mouth. Wow. So yeah, so both mouth, both gape related, but, um, yeah, I hold two. It's pretty, it's pretty special. And it was, it was all for, from TikTok. I have to say, yeah, it was really TikTok that, that helped me, help me get them. So but not only that, like I saw that you were on a few shows. You have a beautiful singing voice, absolutely beautiful singing voice. And then you would incorporate shoving food in your mouth with that, which was like the judges reactions were priceless on that. Um, and funny. you do like influencing and you do these funny fashion. I love when you do the fashion and yes. you put on these yes. outfits yes. Um, so you do all of these things. My favorite, of course, is O. James, um, when you oh, imitate and try to recreate funny videos. What is your favorite part of all of that? Well, you know, I always, of course, had was a theater kid. I always loved performing, entertaining. And, pre, you know, prior to COVID and TikTok blowing up, I was doing a lot of improv. I was singing a lot. And I always knew I had a big mouth, but now, you know, I've been able to do it in so many different facets. Like, I think that's what I kind of love about being able to do this is I do get to be creative and obviously getting to do the fun skits and the challenges with James. Um, and then, you know, of course I love food. So I get to incorporate food into my videos, which has been amazing and just fun to, you know, and just easy, you know, and you have a big gape like I do. And then we also get to do shows and get to meet people in person. So it's like, it really is the perfect blend. It's amazing that I get to do a little bit of everything, which is just, just it's a dream, honestly. So I want to bring James into this because um, when you do talk. these, when you do not. these videos, you do talk, right? <laughs> he can, <laughs> he can speak. He's not totally mute. When he lie. When he lie, yeah. Well, when you do these videos, I think one of the most charming aspects of it is James's reaction. Okay, so let's go to the infamous wall breaking video, which I just oh, rewatched. I mean, we're yeah. obsessed with it, right? So you did this lift, you were so excited in your huge anus t shirt. Which is <laughs> I gotta bring that back out now that it's election season. I, I was hoping you would wear it today. It's oh. amazing. But I know so I should, I gotta get it out. It's awesome. And so he, he brings you down and literally your ass hits the wall and James just, you're standing there like this. James is standing there and just, you know, oh fuck. I mean, that's yeah. literally yeah. his word. reaction, but some of these other reactions when she's trying to do these movements and you just, it's so perfect. Is that something that you kind of talked about? Or is that really you, James, just like your reaction? Both. I think that I, I'm i very entertained by her, first of all. she's a, She never gives me shit for, like, not laughing because I'm, I process a lot internally. And you're so used to it. At when I point. see her do, well, then, it, then after yeah. a while, it got to be so used to it. But I think it was more... I love her phrase on how she grew on TikTok, right? She went to go get the Guinness Book of World Records because the children of TikTok were making fun of her and she leaned into it, right? 
Yeah. And it's just kind of the same thing. I am, I love deadpan comedy. I yeah. love old school, like Monty Python. I love Will Ferrell when he's just not doing anything. Mm -hmm. I love non-reactions when everyone else in the world thinks there should be a reaction, I guess. Yeah. And I sort of did it and people thought it was good. And it is me. It. It's not a total act, but yeah. Yeah. I guess I hope that answers your question. And it balances things out. Like I think it is because I'm so insane. Like he is definitely like the yin to my yang. And I think like what he was saying, like in the beginning, you know, like he does, like he works full time. Like he has like a normal, real job, a real, yeah. real people job. <laughs> and, you know, so it would be like when he gets home at five o'clock, me being like, oh, James, time to do a TikTok. And he'd be like, okay you know and that reaction just got you know obviously a good laugh out of people so of course now we now it's just part of the bit well let but. me play on that a little bit because james you mentioned that you're really entertained by her obviously everybody is entertained by you sam you're funny as hell <laughs> that's why you have so many followers it's like it, it's just really cool to watch the stuff that you do thank you genuinely really um how is it when, you know, the, the phones are put down and, you know, you guys take a break from social media and it's just the two of you with the animals hanging out. Do you still have these moments or is it really calmed down? Like we're, when people aren't watching. When's break from social media? Yeah, when's just, that wait, typical break from when, social when do we put our phones down? I don't, I don't know when about that. Cool. Kind of what no. kind of the universe no. are you discussing? No, there's, I mean, I feel like, you know, of course, like one of the reasons we love being around each other so much is because we do, we love to laugh and goof and be silly. And of course we love our animals. So whenever, like if we're not on social media, of course we share a lot on social media, but you know, we love like going somewhere we can bring the animals. He loves, he's a big nature guy. We love like going and, you know, getting a place and renting somewhere in the woods and he can be outside and be outside with the animals. So yeah. it definitely still is like, of course, you know, we, I think things are definitely a little bit more calmed down, but we still like, that's always been a foundation of our relationship is giggling and goofing. That. We both, I mean, just like with what she does so well, about mm -hmm. taking something like you said the fashion trends right and making <laughs> how do you james fun. seriously how how do you handle that when she comes out in in the hairy body suit or these i mean listen girl let me just tell you freaking kudos to you which by the way i just want to tell you my daughter's upstairs okay yeah the, the pierced nipple well, that was a great example. They're, they're turning 18. I got, I bought them as a gag. <laughs> and, you know, like that was a great example of like, you know, I feel like he now at this point, like if he ever walks upstairs, you know, and I'm like kind of in those are creative mode. That yeah, he literally is just like. Most of this stuff is so real. It's <laughs> almost all actually fairly real. Meaning yeah. I walked up yesterday to tell her something about the animals. It was just. A stupid animal story because the cats were hunting a mouse. And I came up and she had these things on her cheeks. And I just kept talking to her like normal. <laughs> and she's like, I could tell she was recording. And I was just kind of like, I'm just going to whatever. I'm just going to ignore it. Just That's go fine. with it. Yeah. I think what I was getting at is a lot of what she does is so observational. And just to play on the world, which is what all comedians and entertainers really do. I yeah. think that that's when the phones are down. That's something else we do. Like, we also have been going to more movies. I love going to a movie theater. We'll yeah. discuss the movies and the implications of it and the past yeah. part. Like, discuss situations in life, yeah. I guess. That's what happens. Yeah, we do like having deep life discussions. I love seeing your date nights and you have this inc these incredible meals. And Did you guys see the new Beetlejuice? We did. That was the movie we went and saw the other night. Yeah, we love going to movies, going Rest to date Rest in night. peace, Bob. Don't want to give too much away, but Bob... Bob. Bob. I loved I Bobs. Know. The Bobs. And he said that's his I part. loved that part of the movie. I thought that was really I loved good. the Bobs. So you good. guys I see I like I could see if I were living near you we could be buddies because I love all the scary shit too, right? And you guys were just at um what is it? A Sleepy Hollow? Weren't you just at Sleepy Hollow? 
Yes. I love spooky stuff. He is such a good sport. And, you know, he puts up that he doesn't necessarily, you know, I would say you get, you get entertained by it, but it's not like he's like a full on, like, I believer like, like I am. supporting things you like, but I also, I like, I like his, historical stuff. I like, like seeing history. historical stuff that's part yeah. of American folklore and mythology and some of the greatest stories ever written. It's not a yeah. bad place to go. Yeah, so we find a good balance with that. But so yeah, if he, James is supporting well, your your the spooky interests, right? You obviously support him with the football with the cheese head. Obviously. And I, then the the what is it? did you have what kind of was it like a, a baseball league or the um football league or a fantasy football team. Fantasy <laughs> football. <laughs> So is there anything else that James, like, that you feel like you support James with that we don't really see, like a little behind the scenes? What else do you? And all the travel. Yeah. Literally, I don't have to do it. We do love travel, but like, you know, I, you know, of course I do. I, I find joy in planning. I I like planning other things, but she's so good at planning travel. I just stay the heck out of the way. And sometimes I don't even know where the heck we're going yes that's true oh, nice um what else is there anything else or like you yes support sports me. you support me in a lot of things i mean everything that by sports and everything i you never you let me do all of it yeah you gotta i think that's me. what's like nice to see is you know besides the craze of tiktok and the wildness of everything yes. at the heart of it people are like just from what i'm observing people are really seeing a really sweet couple that really we just we get it we see it even through the lens we see that you guys love and support each other which is just so sweet and we just love seeing your animals too because it's like a big happy family right and you say it is i know well it's so funny there's this dog right here and i realized i was like petting and going like this was like that probably looks weird if you don't know there's a dog here Did you know there was a dog in his lap and i'm oh, like my goodness that is yeah. so well that yeah that would have been well it was fitting been interesting. yeah he would have it would have kind of fitting been it's fitting yeah, you you, you endorse a lot of products which i think is a great perk i i've had the opportunity to do that doing what i do as well and georgie and louie right. are i i manage more of my dogs on social media than i do myself and they they pimp out products left and right i'm People telling you them. so what, what is your favorite product that you endorse i don't want to cut any of your endorsements but like what is one that you really okay. love and support well of course like you know especially being able to have this platform like i a lot of these products are things like i've loved and have reached out to people and been like you know especially you know like for the pets i we've been doing farmer's dog i'm doing their oh, farmer's yeah. dog food and you know it was like one of those things where it was like hey if we can share our love for farmer's dog you know being able to get um a partnership with them was huge yeah um getting them to pay some of the bills you know like get these yeah. dogs paying some of these vet bills these dogs and ha- right? and let me tell you do you see a difference adding a second dog well definitely well in the beginning you know now I think things are like like much more settled down and yes like you know good and and not there's really any bad anymore in the beginning it was tough having a puppy and the new you know a new dog in the house with all the other animals but now I mean now it's like we can't imagine like life without her you know it's like we can't even imagine it but um she's been such a great addition and kept we have our older dog prue like it's amazing how much more active she is and how much more she loves to play and she needed some weight loss to happen and now she's like doing much better so so it's been great um so that's been a big one also like you know again like other things that i love like my gummies my cbd special gummies um i love i love um also like I, this was again another thing that i just started lo- trying and being obsessed with but um the mushroom coffee which if oh, anyone yeah, has that. tried mushroom coffee it is it like it's one of the best things i can and another one of those things where i'm like i can't believe i didn't try this earlier um so those were probably like a few of my couple like favorite. have we seen sam on gummies on tiktok 
So I, I, pr- I probably, I'm sure like a lot of any time that I'm like on my phone past like 10 PM, there's a chance that I'm on, that I just decided it was a good idea to go <laughs> on my stories or go on TikTok and start telling stories. <laughs> random things um but yeah yeah and especially now like that it's so you know because you did worry about in the beginning too with like sharing that kind of stuff yeah on social media it's like you know is it you know is it good to do that but now that it's so legalized everywhere it's like you know whatever just and it's better than drinking alcohol anyways yeah totally Tell me a little bit about how you guys decided to start Weird and Proud. Oh, well, so originally, like when we started doing the podcast, like it was kind of like, you know, of course, I always say that I'm a weirdo, proud weirdo. I'm weird and there's no, there should be no, you know, negative stigma stigmas around the word weird. And it's good to be right. different and unique more that you know, like that side of the word weird. Um, and so we started the podcast and it was like, oh, you know, just talking about like, you know, maybe like other people that have weird qualities about them or qualities that are considered weird people with, you know, like a quote unquote weird job. And then it was like, all right, you know, and then you start to run out of things. And then we are like, well, what about we do like weird topics? So either like weird, you know, news things that aren't really you know anything political but you know weird news stories or weird deep dives um and then James who is a biology major and a super nerd does like a weird science corner so he'll kind of have like a weird science fact to share Love that. And, and then we have weird secrets where people call in and leave us their weird secrets um so it's just like a little bit of everything weird you know especially right now we're doing a lot of spooky paranormal stuff weird topics around that um but we have so much fun with that obviously we do it together and it's stuff that like I love a rabbit hole I like we talk about love spooky stuff love any of the supernatural stuff and James is so much of like the by the book like very much like you know he's a biology major science guy like wants the facts wants the studies yeah so it's a good little back and forth exchange you know of kind weirdly, of our both views on things weirdly very similar to the characters portrayed on the social media totally yes <laughs> Exactly. not not too different from there right well there is it's the also same. what you asked what do you do when social media is not on discuss topics and- yeah we love because that's like one of our favorite things to do is like do like we always have loved going to like weird museums or like yeah. doing like little weird day trips to places n- no one really goes to and then just talking about it and having like hour-long discussions about it that i was, love the discussion yeah. we love just, just delicious food yapping just yapping and eating oh i love delicious food here come here yes oh do you have a is there an animal in the vicinity? Doggy. Oh my god! Oh my goodness! I want to smooch them. This is oh Georgie Puggle, and she's I my want girl. Smoochie, smoochie. How <laughs> a do- that's a big puggle. She's a well. Let me tell you, she loves her treats and her snacks. Um, but we do show. a green bean diet where I cut half her kibble and do green beans and half the kibble. She lost about she, 10 pounds last year, but we fell off the wagon. <laughs> Listen, so relatable, relatable. Can you say hi to Peach? So sweet. I know, Peach is like passed out. Look oh. At Peach. Out, out. Sleep. We brought Wait, her to the dog park. And earlier she today, ran, ran, she has ran, been, ran, ran. yeah, she was. Wait so- until you see my other, my boy. You're going to flip. Wait, when what? You see my thinking? boy little he's smaller but he's more pug but he's tricolor are are they rescues or where how did you get them so she is kind of like a rescue from pennsylvania and then i but i got her at 10 weeks and then my louie there was a litter that was born um of a woman from pennsylvania I'm, i'm in maryland right 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 yeah and so there was a woman and i'm part of all the puggle boards on facebook and this woman posted this litter, this oopsie litter, because during COVID, her boy couldn't get um, neutered. The uh, vet was not doing it at that time. So um, 
basically he got to her girl and created this beautiful litter and I got my <laughs> that's I got my boy and this is yeah she's she just turned eight and oh please I, it's Cruz age. That's, age. That's, See, that's yeah. the thing. I, I, yeah, I like really compare them. It's cute um, because she gets annoyed with Louie and, but now she gets along with Louie, but she, in the beginning she was kind of like Prue. Yeah, that's, that was, Prue was definitely like, you know, the princess, we have cats obviously, but she was really, yeah. The princess, so it took a little while, but yeah, now they're besties and they get along great. They're good for Prue. It's good for Prue. So I love that. Do you yeah. find that like when you're on social media and trying to stay, I don't know if relevance, the right word, but trying to keep people interested, right? Do you feel like you have to come up with new material? I mean, weekly, daily, I mean, all the time. How does that work for you? <laughs> Yeah, that is like literally my life is like constantly being like, oh my God, am I losing relevance? Am I, you know, like trying to keep up with the trends, trying to keep, you know, up your engagement, you know, especially too, once this becomes your job, then it it's this weird balance where like you try to not, you know, you're trying not to take stuff too personally, but it's also your job. So like when you get yeah. unfollowed or get, you know, when a video doesn't do well, it's like, oh my God, did I just... I failed at work today, you know, like I failed today. Yeah. yeah. So it totally is. It can mess with you. But I think number one, that's, you know, why I have great support around me. And also it's just part of the learning process with social media where like some days, you know, or even weeks or months, great engagement's great. And then it drops off for a little bit. Like, you know, that's where I've kind of been with TikTok recently is like, I'm like, oh my God, you know, it's 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 tough that it's oversaturated you know there is like so many people which is amazing but um it's hard not to compare yourself even when you've been doing it for a couple of years now yeah. but um but it's just I always have to just remind myself that I do this because it's fun and I love doing it and you know if I get too much in my head then I freak myself out and then I second guess everything so mm -hmm. I just I need yeah to try not to think about it too much honestly <laughs> So, but so I, James has a James has a a regular job, right? That he goes to every day. Yes. And so, did this really start for you during the pandemic? Yeah. So, yep. did you have a a regular job before then? I and did. You ended up you ended up quitting to do this full time. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. Can you tell me a little bit about that story? Yeah. Well, luckily, and you, and, and you guys discussed that. Obviously, oh, you yeah. had to make some house decisions just see yeah. what worked best for your family yeah well I had always wanted to do this like you know my whole life and before COVID I was so we live like 45 minutes outside of New York City yeah. um, but I was in a band in a wedding band and then I would go into the city like five six days a week um, either going to open mics or going to Broadway auditions I was trying to I would, some of those would be at five in the morning and I have to get down to New York city. So I was working a full-time job plus going to the city. I mean, I feel like I was like never home, you know, in 2018, 2019 up into right up to the pandemic. So it almost, you know, like in the beginning of the pandemic, I was like, my career is over, you know, now I'm going to be too old when I come out of it, you know, I was trying to do and, you know, be like a professional, whether it was like doing musical theater or doing comedy I was writing my own music too and I thought my career was over I was like this is it and then TikTok started and eventually started blowing up on there and it was like wow this is crazy that I can do what I've always wanted to do but now I can do it from my phone and in the house and make more money doing it than I did in my in a full-time job yeah give me the ability to travel and do shows that I've been wanting to do since forever and ever and ever so you know of course it was one of those crazy things where it ended up being as crazy as this is because I know obviously COVID was detrimental to so many people but it ended up being like one of the best things that could have happened to me really There's so much that came out of COVID that I've yeah. always talked about I mean uh to, for to go towards music for instance yeah 
so many of these musicians were stuck in their home studios, but it gave people the creativity and the drive to do something and get more work out. So I think that's really cool of you that you were able to kind of push yourself in this direction and, and give yourself a creative outlet and finding your way. And you found it, girl, you found, and now you're doing shows. When did the, when did the touring start? Cause I know it didn't start right away. You had to build up to that. Yeah. When did you guys start touring and James goes with you? Yes, of course. James comes yeah. with, and the uh, we have to work it around the sketch, yeah. you know, the work schedule and all that. And that's why, you know, things are also kind of spaced out a little bit, but, um, so, I mean, I was doing shows, like I was writing my own one woman show in 2019 and I was about to do it in March of 2020. And then of course that didn't end up happening. Um, so I think I started doing finally like late summer, there was a comedy club that opened up like 15 minutes from me and, you know, and it was like the worst. Cause they would have like a plastic bearing set up on the stage. It was so terrifying because it's like finally getting back into performing again and it was in such a weird way you know people all the people spaced out but I would do like a couple shows there you know every month or every you know I, I mean I was there at least a couple times a month doing shows working on material then what, of course once start stuff started opening back up in the city going into the city a lot and going to open mics again and just rebuilding material and then really like probably doing bigger cities going out of New York City area was like in like the end of 2022, maybe like early 2023. Wow. And now yeah. I just saw that you're coming to Magooby's Joke House. Yeah. Which is, I, let me tell you something. Uh -huh. When I got on the computer, I guess it was last week. And, um, and I saw that you had posted on your Instagram story. And I go... And I saw that you were coming to McGooby's, which is literally six minutes from my house. Oh, and I was like, stop it. You might have to come over and say hi to Georgie and Louie. Oh my God. Oh my God. Sure. I'm like, I, I was screaming and I was so excited that I'm having surgery um, in a week and a half. And so it gives me plenty of recovery time, oh, but God. I'm like, so I already bought my tickets with my girlfriends. Thank you. And we will be there. We are so excited because we all follow you and talk about you guys <laughs> in the best way possible. Yeah. So it's funny, my friend Linda, her husband's name is James. So when I discovered you guys, I would call her up and I would be like, I'm sorry, can I talk to oh James? <laughs> It's become, I love it. it's become this thing, right? So every time I see him, I like, he, I can't, he can't ever get away, get from, away it, from it ever. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so we will be there. I'm so excited when, when people get tickets to come to your show. Yes. What can people expect to see? What kind of show are we coming to? Like, what are we going to get? So, of course, well, you know, there's some classic stand up, if you will, um, that I do telling stories, you know, again, about this idea of growing up weird, growing up as a millennial with mental illnesses and a huge, massive gape. Um, and, you know, of course, we always end the show with a um, an a, a challenge that James, of course, bring James on stage. We do a challenge. Uh, we also do some weird secrets. So um, just like we did in our podcast, now we do a live version of that where we have people, you know, write down their weird secrets and we do a fun little game, little live version of that at the show. I also do also sing a song or two, depending on, you know, I'm trying to decide what to do for the show and little playing around with it. But I have some original comedy songs that I wrote that also there'll be a song or two. It's more of a variety show. Yeah, it's a little more like I a comedy variety that. show. I'm so she good. I love it. A little version, bit of everything. The secrets, the live secrets on stage. I come out beforehand, so I come out to get to meet everybody. Yeah. And it's more the the live secrets on stage is really a small, it's an improv set, right? Then she does the O James challenge at the end. She does classic stand-up. And she sings. You get something. Yeah, a little bit of everything. Everybody. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. That's fantastic. Oh, I can't yeah. wait to see. I really can't really wait fun. to see. Yes. Uh, 
So anything planned for the future that maybe you want to plug now that maybe we don't know about? Oh, well, <laughs> I think of something that I could say. Uh, yeah, um, I much. might be going back on TV soon for another Got Talent show. Ooh. Okay. I mean, so. Do you want okay. to tell me, what, is the Italy trip sold out? It is. Oh my gosh, that's right. The Italy trip. Let me tell you, if I, I work in radio, so we all know how that goes. Totally. So if, if I, but if I, you know, if my show takes off the next trip, I'm joining you. <gasps> For sure. Okay. Well, and there will be more, like, this is kind of like the first one to kind of, you know, see how it goes smaller group, but if all goes well, we'll hopefully be doing more of those. Maybe a main oh, version God. of it too, like trying to find some other versions too. So, so if people don't know, um, Sam and James have planned this trip and invited some of their fans to join them in this yeah. house in Italy. What part of Italy again? In Tuscany, right outside Tuscany. Florence. Right. Yeah. yeah, I've been I've been to Florence. I have not been to Tuscany, but wow. I mean, amazing. And we love seeing how you go and visit your mom in Spain. And clearly you guys have so much fun romping around Europe together. So this is going to be like very fitting. Um, and it's sold out? And it's sold out. I know. It did sell out. So it's the first, it's the beta test. Yes, yeah, the beta test. So there'll but... be other opportunities for people. And again, maybe not all of them abroad, some around the U.S. Just a chance yeah, we'll to vacation with friends. Yeah. I'm just going to drop a little... Maybe the next one is Scotland with baby Highland cows. I would love that. It's on that's on our list too to go to Scotland. Scotland I have not been there. Very much on our list. Baby yeah. Highland. Love to cuddle a baby Highland. Cow. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh, baby Highland cow. <laughs> I am obsessed with Highland cows. They're, They're so, so cute. They're the so babies. Big oh dogs. my gosh. Or like find a dog farm somewhere and we just all go romp around with the dogs. God, I would love that. Yes. Love and there's definitely some spooky stuff in Scotland for sure. There are, yes. And I went, I went up to Inverness, Lake Loch Ness, look for Ness. Oh, you did? I did. I did. And it's did so it weird because like, it's like uh, castle ruins around Lake Loch Ness. And then I remember there's this little teeny tiny building at the edge of the lake. And yeah. it's the um, Lake Loch Ness Museum. And you walk in and it's like literally this tiny little hut of a building. And they had cartoon Nessie on the tv <laughs> and it's like you walk yeah. into this weird other universe like I know, it's so weird that's why i was like what? it's totally on what brand. is this just this random little hut thing in inverness scotland it's bizarre so i love yeah. it i love it yeah Good we might have out. to do that kind of trip totally Oh my gosh. You guys are so much fun. I am one of your biggest fans. I'm so excited that I got to talk to you and I can't wait to see you on tour. And if, yes. if, you, if you do more tour dates, you know, keep putting them out there. And I hope that people always oh, see a kitty. Here comes a cat. I thought figured a cat would come in here soon. Yeah, we need all the animals um, we can get. So yeah. I hope that people um get tickets to see your show because you guys are worth seeing and keep putting out that content because we love it. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah, if you want any info to like on tours, I'll I can yeah. obviously send you the link too. But if you go to samantharamsdell.com slash events, you'll see all the list of other shows and stuff we have coming up too. It'll be right on there. Perfect. That's perfect. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Thank you so Thank much. You. This was fun. It was so nice You're chatting wonderful. with you. You're yes. amazing. <laughs> we'll see you soon.